Hey guys, this is Seth and Paul with your favorite channel on YouTube, Everything Money. Welcome back. We analyze stocks, businesses. We talk about real estate. Stocks have been huge this year, Paul, and we're going to do another one today. Lennar Home Builders. Uh, obviously, uh, they're based out of Miami, Florida. You're interested in this company. Their stock price is a lot higher than it was a few months ago. And we're going to look use our eight pillar analysis to look at the health of a company, the PE, the, the revenue, the profits, the shares, uh, the free cash flow, all of which are going to go into the analysis brought to you by your Uncle Paul in his beautiful, sexy shorts he's always wearing. Paul, uh, good to see you again. How are you, my Thank dear you, friend? Thank you, sir. Lennar. Tell me about this company, brother. So, $26 billion market cap, right? PE of only 11, so check mark there. We like that. These home builders tend to sell for low PEs for some reason. Okay. Profit margin, last quarter, 13%, and but for the we're going to look at the main year, 2.5%. That's over 10%, check mark there. There is a dividend. Wow, what 1. is it? 1.2%. Okay, one so, one they're spending about $300 million a year on dividend payments. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's something to consider when we look at the free cash flow. Can they support the dividend? Absolutely. That's pillar number seven. So we have but two checks so far. Pillar number three is revenue growth. We want to see their revenue growing. I'm sure they're doing well last year, eh? Yep. 11 billion to 22 billion. Okay. Double. That's but good. big jump here. So I'm going to do something different here, guys. Usually I say when there's a big jump, there's probably an acquisition. I want to go to their financial statement now. Their statement of cash flows where it'll tell me what acquisitions they've done. Because to go from, for a home builder to go from 12 and a half billion to 20 and a half billion, and it's a 66% increase in one year, something must have happened. So let's go to the cash flow statement. And in the investing section, there's a part called acquisitions and divestures. Now, it's not showing a big jump in those years, but what could be happening is that, oh, that's why. That's not, that's quarterly, not yearly. Let's go to, let's go to yearly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the annual cash flow statement to see the investing section. It'll tell us what acquisitions have been made. So if you look right here, net divestures and acquisitions are in parentheses. Acquisitions would be a negative number. We saw a big jump from this year to this year. So there was a billion and a billion three in back-to-back -back years in, 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 uh, in acquisitions. So I don't know the timing of them, but that would explain a big jump in revenue. Okay. So that explains that revenue jump. We prefer the revenue to be jumping because of natural growth, which you can find in their 10K at some point. After three straight checks, let's go to pillar number four, which is profit. I'm sorry, profit growth, Paul. Yes. 900 million. By the way, 911, never forget. That's right. And 2.5 billion. Yeah. Check mark there. They're doing great. Four straight checks. How about number of shares outstanding? We want this number going down. Pillar number five, baby. Number of shares outstanding. Uh oh. Uh -oh. 223 all the way to 309. X. Uh -oh. I don't like that. And guess what? Look at the last decade. Last decade has been a lot of shares issued. You want to figure out why that is, guys. What are they doing to issue those shares? Are they are they issuing shares to acquire things? I don't know. Now the good news is in the last year, it did go down. But we'll see. Please take just a simple moment of likeness and smash that thumbs up. Just give it a little tickle. You can tickle Paul. He loves to be tickled. Just tickle that thumbs up. <laughs> We appreciate, <laughs> we appreciate your support. Paul, we are on to pillar number six, which is current assets greater than current liabilities. Let's do, let's do it. 22.5 billion mm -hmm. versus 1.74 billion. Uh -oh. And the monster of all monsters, total liabilities of 11.8. So they have plenty of cash to pay off all of their liabilities. This is what we love to see. This tends to happen in home builders. I don't know why, but it tends to happen. They have so much cash on hand. They probably get a lot of cash from the financing, from the, from the houses, et cetera, as they're building them and selling them to people. Now. Pillar number seven is free cash flow growth. We want this going up, obviously. Okay. Five years ago, cash from operations, less capital expenditures. This is the money they use to pay, for, to pay dividends out, to buy back shares, et cetera. Um, it was about, so it went from 440. No, 430. Sorry, Seth. 430. Okay to 4.1 billion. Oh. oh, really? Check mark. Yeah, that's yeah. They had that early. acquisition along the way, if you remember. Okay, so they obviously- So I'm only gonna do the last three years then, Seth. Please do. So do 4.1 billion. Oh my gosh, why is that big jump there? Hmm. 1.55 billion and 1.4 billion. Oh boy, this is a messed up. I mean, the average free cash flow is twenty three fifty. It's not though, <laughs> right? No, it's how's it twenty three fifty? You did the math wrong. 
Oh, let me do but here's again. the deal, guys. Here's what I want to show. Look at this op cash from operations. Look at years ago. Negative, 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 negative. Finally got positive, positive, po I mean, big jumps here. I don't know how I feel about that. So there, let's say they're one point, let's say the last, let's say just take the last, this two years, 1.5 billion. What's the market cap of the company? 26. So 1.5 times 20 equals 30 billion. So it hits our check mark of, of price to free cash flow less than 20. The question is, does it justify 20 as a free cash flow? This is the most common question we get. Mm -hmm. In fast growing companies, you should pay a higher multiple than in slow growing companies. This company is not growing a ton when it comes to revenue. Because if you look at it, the revenue jumps came from an acquisition, right? Apart from the acquisition, the revenue jumps weren't that much. Now, granted, this is pandemic time right here, which I'm still impressed they got that, but I don't know how I feel about, hmm, this is a doozy. This is why the home builders are confusing to me. Um, I love the PE. I love the, the balance sheet. Now, one of the things I do with home builders is, let's go back and look how they did in the previous decade during the, cra during the crash. Look at this, guys. When people tell you that things can't go bad, 2002, 7 billion. 2006, 16 billion. 2010, 3 billion. Wow. That's revenue numbers. Wow. That's revenue numbers. It can drop big time. Big, big time. Let's look at their profit in those years. Ready? 545 million. Oh, they actually, uh, 594 million, 95 million. Wow. But they lost several billion in between. So I'm looking at the saying, you know, what do you do with a company like this? I do think we're in a frothy real estate market right now. Mm -hmm. Interest rates are low. People are excited. They're selling things like crazy. I, I don't know what to say about, what do you think, Seth? Tell me your thoughts. Like, is it, if you're a natural person thinking about this stuff, what are you thinking about? I mean, it, I, I follow my, the teachings of you. So I see all these checks, the nice PE, a nice profit margin. A rampant growth uh, over the past five, but not the last three. Um, and know, the rapid growth was from an acquisition. You have taught me to be a little more hesitant and not trying to find stocks to buy, but really weeding out the ones that I shouldn't. So um, for those of you out there, we have the eight pillars. And a lot of people think, oh, there's lots of checks, you buy it. No, this is an example. Like I'm looking at this saying, what, what's going on here that allows these checks to be so prevalent on a company that can fluctuate. I mean, you saw their revenues in 2000, 2010. People would say, well, that was the real estate bust. I get it, don't get me wrong. That's why their revenues fell 80%. Is that likely to happen here? I don't know. But at the same point, their, 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 their margins are fine. They can definitely afford their dividend. That's the good news. But the dividend is not huge to begin with. I mean, I've learned from you that you always say if you can't understand it, you just kind of stay away. Things like Bitcoin or getting involved in all the other you know, things of this nature, like a Dodge coin, all this malarkey. Uh, so, yeah, most of the time, if I'm just confused, um, it's probably a you've sort of ingrained in me. It's probably a no go. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is my advice is unless you feel really comfortable by doing some more thorough analysis in Lennar, I'm personally going to avoid it. I'm going to wait for the real estate market to kind of settle down where things are much more stable from a long-term perspective, much more in line with long-term averages, and then start looking at home builders. I don't like to buy things that are in a very, very fast growing or a very, very hyped up industry. Home prices are hyped up. If anybody here, everybody here knows a story or has done it where they sold their house in a matter of, they had five offers in the first day. They yep. sold it before it went to market, all these things. That is not the market I wanna be investing in home builders into. That's the hype, the euphoria, all that stuff. I wanna invest when people are kind of like, eh, should you buy? Should you be doing this? I don't know, et cetera. That's what I want to be investing. So the, I'm going to avoid this for right now. If this resonates, this, uh, this in-depth look, looking at the financials, you can join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Paul, we have almost 600 patrons. It's been incredible. I, I couldn't believe when we started this four months ago, it would explode like this. But what we have developed is a wonderful community. And if you're in it, you know it and you love it and we love you. Uh, come join our Patreon. You'll get access to our app that's coming out here in the next few months that'll look just like Y charts, and it won't cost you three dollars $500 a month. It'll only cost you eight dollars to join our patreon and get involved and with those spots are very limited we only have a hundred and some spots left once those spots are filled we will open up another patreon but it'll be twelve dollars a month so join now you're crazy not to you get the patrons you get all the groups to talk it's very active 
well over a thousand messages a day are in their Discord chat, and you're gonna get the all these financials as well as the eight pillars automatically done for you and more to come. And as we add more software, you will not be charged extra. Make sure you give that, that thumbs up a little tickle uh, if you support uh, our channel and support Paul's tight white pants, his little shorty shorts. Um, both are, are in line with our values, Paul. I love you. And I love you for watching and thanks to our patrons. We love our followers. See you guys. Thanks. Yeah.